ego leads to misery. I have been asked to speak on Tantra for me. Tantra has nothing to do with sex. It is an aspect of Buddhism. There are many branches. One started with Buddha, then Mahakashyap to Bodhi Dharma that gave birth to Zen Buddhism. The other began with his son, Buddha's son Rahul Bhadra, via Saraha, and began the aspect of Tantra. There are seven centers in human body. It is erroneous to say that they are in the human body. Yes, they exist in the in a subtle form. If you do any dissection, you will not find any of these centers. These centers are never in harmony with one another. There is a continuous tug of war between these centers. Energy remains distorted between these centers. Tantra is the art of balancing these centers so that inner harmony is obtained and then it manifests in the outer world as this. But there has been a drive all around that Tantra has to do with sex. Yes, sex can be a medium but it is not the ultimate. Chinese masters, Lu Zhu, spoke of inner balance through animal and animus. These are the two aspects which Hindus call as Shiva and Shakti or male-female energies or yin and yang according to Chinese system. Each of us is born as an interaction between ovum and sperm. How to balance two poles of the energy? How to bring nafs and kalp in harmony with one another? According to Sufi terminology, is the art of Tantra. Anything that you do, if it is done with totality, with awareness, becomes the Tantra vision. You are listening, but you are not listening in its totality. You are trying to figure out what resonates with you, whatever I am saying, that is immediately absorbed. And that which does not resonate with you is not absorbed. The moment you are into something in its totality means all the three faculties, the body, the mind, the intellect. These are the three known faculties are in harmony with one another. The Tantra vision begins. I will continue on Tantra vision as soon as possible. Just as a prelude, I had posted a few posts on the Facebook page. Now, ego leads to misery. Love always leads to misery because we do not understand what love is. 
we have not established inner values within ourselves means all the centers are in harmony and you have not been asked or learn the art of loving yourself. Only those who love themselves can love others. We have been asked to love others but not ourselves. Whenever you listen to the voice of ego, sooner or later there will be trouble. You will fall into the trap of mystery. This you have to watch and be So remember, whenever there is misery in life, because of any decision that you have taken, it is prompted by ego. Love never wins. If it is love and you have understood the crux of the matter, it does not bring misery. Ego always leads to misery. Remember this is unconditional. Always categorically and absolutely this is how it happens. And whenever you listen to your nature, it leads you to a well-being, contentment, a silence and bliss. So this should be the criteria. You will have to make many errors because there is no other way. You have to watch your own choices from where the voice is coming and then you have to see what happens because fruit is the criteria of the process. All those choices and decisions that emerge from as God's choice or the voice of the unknown and unknowable bring blissfulness and benediction in them. It is said God is unknown and unknown. So then what is the criteria to attain to Him? attain to his needs. Whenever any new circumstance and situation comes, you have to accept it in its totality. Go into it. Sooner or later, it will become a we. Many such simple examples come in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. By me, many times, a stranger calls and says he wants to have a dialogue with me. I have never met that person. That person is totally a stranger to me. And it is said, never allow these strangers in your house. But such is not the case with me. Anyone who wants to have a word with me is allowed to come to my place, is entertained, because I overflow love and there is no fear. The person is a stranger, but no one is a stranger to me. The moment you are connected to yourself, you are connected to the entire cosmos. Everyone becomes known to you. This is one way to enter into the realm of the unknown and unknown. Almost on a day-to-day -day basis it happens. All those choices and decisions that emerge as God's choices or voices of the unknown and unknowable 
bring blissfulness and benediction in life. And the decisions that emerged out of ego make you miserable. When you do something, watch, be alert, and if it leads to misery, then you know well that it was ego. Then the next time be alert and do not listen to that voice. If it is nature, it will lead you, it will lead you towards blissful state of mind. It is well known when Jesus was in his intense meditation, devil came to him and tried to tempt him. And devil comes in the form of a snake. The snake represents the energy which has not attained to its fruition. Hindus call it Kundalini. The energy is stored at the base center. It's supposed to have invoked from there and continue its ascendance. It is said Jesus was meditating on top of the hill and the devil said, It is said in the scriptures that God will protect his son. So jump from the cliff. But Jesus was listening to the voice and he said, it is also written in the scriptures that certainly God will protect, the angels will protect, but there is no need to put him to test. How can this voice that guided Jesus come to you? A stranger comes to meet you or a strange circumstance or situation comes, immediately you should realize if there is awareness that God is omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. He manifests through the entire creation. And if he manifests through entire creation, then there should be no fear. The mirror has a capability to reflect something that comes in front of it. But if the surface of the mirror has a layer of dust, the image of the object that appears in front of it will become blood or its surface will become empty. So that person who has come in front of you, in front of you or seeks an appointment, he is something like a mirror that surface has gathered a layer of dust. And it is not being able to reflect the reality. But you know this. Then you can interact with that person. And this is how the voice, the inner voice, begin to take over. When Buddha was meditating last time, Dhamma, the illusion in the form of Kumara, as happens, as it is known in the Pali language, the language used by Buddha, used at the time of Buddha, appeared along with his three daughters and the great foes and tried to persuade Buddha in every single way. But when it did not happen, it tried to coerce Buddha, but nothing happened. 
it always happens like this nature is always beautiful ego on the other hand is ugly there is no other way but to try and then i cannot give you a criteria so that you can judge everything it is subtle and complex and all criteria for sure you will have to make your own effort to judge so whenever you do something listen to the voice from within make a note of it of course attentively and see where it leads to if it leads to misery it was certainly the voice of thinking then slowly and slowly you will be able to decipher if the voice is coming from ego or from your nature if your love leads to misery it was from ego if your love leads to a beautiful benediction and blessings it is from nature if your friendship or even your meditation leads to misery it was from ego if it were from nature everything would fit in everything would become harmonious nature is wonderful and beautiful but you have to work it out always make a note of what you are doing and where it leads by and by you will become aware of that which is ego and that which is nature which is real and which is false it will take time alertness and keen observation that is why my whole emphasis is on introspection and my first set up the radio program began as hour of introspection every moment is an hour of introspection before you enter into any circumstance or situation let there be introspection it will take time alertness and keen observation and never deceive yourself because only ego leads to misery and nothing else never throw the responsibility on the other for your misery the other is irrelevant your ego leads to misery but you consider that this misery is because of the other the most important criteria to move inward to reach to that unfathomable reservoir that is this is not to blame others for anything nobody else can lead you into misery except you through your ego ego is the gate of hell and all that is natural and authentic that comes from your center is the door to blissfulness harmony and oneness and this blissfulness harmony and oneness has been termed in the religious terms as happy nowhere any wall garden as heaven or hell it is the inner state of the being you will have to find it out and work it out if you work it out diligently soon you will be absolutely certain and certain of what is from nature 
and what is from him, then you can differentiate. Then do not follow the evil. In fact, then you will be by yourself and not be following the evil. There will be no need to make any effort. You will simply be following the natural. The natural is divine. And in nature, the supernature is hidden. If you follow the natural by and by, slowly and slowly, even without making any noise or effort, suddenly the natural will disappear and supernatural will appear in its place. Nature leads to both. Nature means all that is natural, spontaneous, because God is hidden in the nature. Creativity is one of the most beautiful examples of it. It is said God is creator. The creator is the process of creation. The creator is hidden in its creation. If you can see the beauty and the fragrance and introspect on the beauty and the fragrance of the flower, you will go deeper into something that will lead you to the blissfulness. But what the plant does, it continues continues to gather all that it needs for its growth from the earth, processes it and channels it into various parts of the plant and then the process begins. And it ends up in beautiful blooms full of fragrance and beauty. This is the process. First be natural, then you will be flowing in the river of the natural and one day the, live, the river will fall in the ocean of the supernatural. Then you will maintain your individuality, but your nature will be supernatural or ocean. You are identified as a drop of ocean, no more the drop of Hudson or Thames or Nile or Ganges or any other river. There is a vast difference between the drop of Hudson and the drop from the ocean. These are the two processes called in Sufism as Fana and Baka. You subsist in totality, in subsist in supernatural. And that's and then just silence remains, just silence and peacefulness. Everything has dissolved into oneness and there is ultimate oneness as harmony and peace. 